Hello everyone and welcome back to Small Room Audio. Today we're going to do something that I've wanted to do for some time, which is not a review, but instead a talk about streaming DAX. Because when I was going on my audiophile journey, I thought, well, what's the difference between something that costs 60 quid and something that costs a lot of money indeed? What do you get when you spend more cash on a streaming DAC? Before we get into it, um, I've got to say a few caveats. We are going to have lots of generalizations, lots of stereotypes, lots of sweeping statements in this video because this is not a review. It's just to give you a guide if you're going on that audiophile journey as to what you might expect. But of course, there are loads of different streaming DACs, loads of different options. Not all of them are going to sound like the ones I'm going to cover today. But I thought I'd just give you a view as to my opinions on them as you go up the value chain, just because it might be helpful and interesting to you. So that's what we're going to do. First of all, I um, should probably say, what is a streaming DAC? Well, a DAC, first of all, is a digital to analog converter. So in layman's terms, all the noughts and ones you get from a computer or from Spotify or something like that, then need to get transferred into an analog signal. And that's what a DAC does. That signal then gets amplified by your amplifier, fed through into your speakers, and it creates wonderful music. What's a streamer? Well, that is a, a device which streams the music from either locally sourced music, so you might have a NAS drive or a hard drive or something like that, um, or you might have a digital service like Spotify, Cobuzz, Amazon Music, Tidal, etc., etc. So yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. A streaming DAC does both of those elements. It streams the music from your favorite supplier of music or locally held music, um, and it also then converts it from a digital to an analog signal. And there's lots of different options on the market. Now, most of us, when we're not audiophiles or we're starting our journey, we'd start off with a mobile phone and the bog standard uh, little dongle DAC that you get from Apple. And that's absolutely fine because it converts it into um, an analog jack output, which you can then use for headphones. Not a problem. But that's our starting point, right? That's our reference point for sound. We want to go better than that. So where do you go from there? Lots of different options, many from the likes of shit and etc. But what I went for in terms of a streaming DAC rather than just a, a DAC uh, was this. This was a DAC 32. This cost me £65. And what's the upgrade, if you like, when you go to something like this in your music? Well, suddenly there's a bit more articulation, more detail. We start to get better dynamics and we get better separation. But we haven't got a 3D soundstage really with this. We've got a fairly flat soundstage, but we've got excellent music, which is a significant step up from the likes of just using something like this into your stereo system. Now, of course, obviously, again, sweeping statement it depends on how good your, the rest of your system is as to how high you might want to go with your streaming DACs, but this is a very good, very good value uh, place to start for a streaming DAC. Very simple. You put your RCA outs there, power in, but also with this streaming DAC, it uses Bluetooth or AirPlay, or indeed you can use it as a Rune endpoint, which many of us might like, because Rune is a great bit of software to um, basically put all of your streaming services in one place, and it sounds great as well. So that's, that's number one. That's where you can start for £65. Where do you go from there? Well, if you want to go up nine times the price or there or thereabouts, you might go to something like this. This is the Blue Sound Node. Now, with the Blue Sound Node, uh, you have got a number of different connections on the back, including HDMI, um, and you've got uh, a DAC in here which can output through the RCA connections at the back. You've got an optimal input, uh, and you've also got USB there as well. Now, the thing about this, the upgrade here, is quite significant because when we had our little DAC32, we didn't really have any sort of software that we used to go with it. Uh, instead, it's pretty straightforward and basic, although it works very well. Here, you have access to the Blue Sound um, software that comes with it, the Blue Sound application, which you can run off of your phone, and it's very good indeed. It's very easy to use. And with the Blue Sound, you're getting into multi room streaming. So, out of all the options we're looking at today, it's the only one that I'm going to put forward to you to consider, which is a multi room option. So, there are lots of Blue Sound standalone speakers. They work a little bit like Sonos, and you can have them around your home, and this can be a central hub with the speakers that you choose. 
Talking about sound quality, the jump up that you get here, which is at £549, is fairly significant. Now, what you get over the DAC32 is a lot more drive, a lot more uh, rhythm. Um, I think in traditional sort of audiophile parlance, we call it prat. Interesting word in English, it means a silly person in England, but prat also means in audiophile terms, um, pace, rhythm and timing. So it's kind of like the, the beat of the music. It sort of gets us going a bit. And that's certainly what the Blue Sound node brings to the table. It brings quite an exciting sound, which is very pleasant to listen to. And it's also very easy to use and it gives you lots of options. This is also quite good if you later want to get a separate DAC because the streamer inside this is excellent on its own right and actually can scale pretty high as you go up the value chain. Anyway, that's the Blue Sound. That's what you get for about £549. It's very good value as well as the other option. Where do you go from there? You want to go up again? Well, let's go up to £1,300 this time. Much bigger box. This is the Atoll MS120. Looks a bit more like a traditional audiophile product, doesn't it? You know, bigger box, a bit heavier. What we've got here is also a pretty well-featured um, streaming DAC. It has MQA, it's got access to Tidal Connect, to Spotify Connect. It's fairly similar in terms of its functionality to the Blue Sound, but you don't have that excellent Blue Sound uh, software to go with it. But what you have in its place is a better volume control. It's a, a very, very, well, not very, very, but much more audiophile sounding product here. Where you had all that rhythm and drive and you had a really good sound from the Blue Sound, suddenly now you're starting to get outline players in the soundstage, starting to get depth in the soundstage. It's all very airy, while still retaining the dynamics and the drive of the other options. But we've gone into audio file territory writ large here. And on the back, you'll see you've got more connections. You've got your ethernet, uh, coax, optical, and of course your line outs and your line ins. Um, it's fairly straightforward across here. You don't have an HDMI, so it's not really meant for uh, being a TV system or, or supportive in your living room, bit like the Blue Sound. But we're talking about better sound quality, much higher grade sound quality. I mean, this is, this is a serious piece of kit. And actually for 1300 pounds, this is excellent value for money because you start to really appreciate the details, the little nuances that jump out in the music. Where do you go from something like this then? So we're going to start to get into the realms of nutcase money, aren't we? Um, I don't actually have the next step up in the line, which would be something like an Aurelic Vega 2.1, which would retail for about £6,700. That would be perhaps the next step if we want to kind of go up five times as much as this. Haven't heard that, not going to talk about it. I'm sure it's very good. But if you want to go crazy nuts to a streaming DAC, you could go to something like this. This is very heavy, first of all. This is a Mola Mola Tambaki. This retails for £10,000, so almost 10 times the amount that the Atoll goes for, or uh, I guess very, very many times the little DAC 32. So we're in nutcase audiophile territory here. So what does all that money bring you? Well, weirdly, it brings you less streaming functionality than pretty much all the others. Yes, you can have Bluetooth on here and you can use it as a rune endpoint through the um, Ethernet port here, but that's pretty much it. It's got good software to control the DAC. It's an excellent volume control if you wanted to use it as a digital preamp but this is all about music quality. And we have a substantial step up in music quality from the Atoll. When I say substantial, I mean, you have to have the, the gear to really appreciate it. If you're listening on 500 pound speakers and a, 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 a fairly standard integrated amplifier under 500 quid, don't bother with this, you'd be nuts. Just upgrade everything else. A system is almost always, uh, you know, as weak as its weakest part. It's a bit like a, we used to say that about computers back in the 90s when I was a lad. Um, but it's the same for audio, really. You want to make sure that it's all fairly balanced across the board. And it would be a bit nuts to go and buy a 10 grand DAC, uh, streaming DAC, if you've got cheaper stuff. I expect you'd hear the difference, but not nearly as much as if, if you've got really resolving speakers and a really resolving system. Talking about the sound difference 
specifically from the atoll at 1300 through to Mola Mola at 10,000, what you're getting is more corporeal body. You know, it's more kind of, um, there's more life, but there's, there's more texture, there's more microdynamics, more detail. This kind of upsamples the music before it plays it out as well. And it does it in a really natural way. I think Mola Mola say it's as good as analog. Well, you know what? I don't think that is necessarily uh, true. I'm not an analog junkie. I like digital music, but this is no way softening anything. This gives you a very big dynamic range. It's very no low on the noise floor. Um, but what it does better than any DAC that I've heard so far is give that kind of fluidity, that flow of music. It's very natural and very alive at the same time. So it's not like when you put a tube amp into your system, sometimes it sort of maybe deadens things down a bit, but sounds very organic. This retains lots of slam, lots of life, lots of oomph, if you like, but it does it in a way which is very, very good. It's very, oh, what do I mean by good? Let's say it properly. It's very real. That's the word we're looking for. If you are at a live concert and you're playing a live recording, this feels, you get the feel of it come through this piece of equipment. It's one of the best DACs that I have tried in my own room. Now, I haven't tried every DAC in the world, but for today's video, in terms of a streaming DAC, you go up to 10 grand, you lose quite a lot of functionality as a streamer, but you gain a whopping amount of DAC. Now, let's, let's talk about what would you buy if you're in the market for these things? Well, it depends how crazy you wanna go. I, I honestly think that the best value of them all are probably these two, because if you're starting off, that is a massive step up, the DAC30 do, from your little kind of phone and, and dongle. Uh, and if you wanna go serious audiophile, this will get you 80% of the way there that this will, pretty much. I mean, this does sound considerably better than this. Is it 10 times better than this? No way. No way at all. I mean, it's, this is 10 times better than that, but of course, 10 times the price of that would be 600 pounds. You know, we're talking crazy diminishing returns in audio file land. I think we all know that. But yes, you pay more, you get more, but it's definitely diminishing returns. This is probably the best buy for a proper audio file product. This is probably the best buy for something you want to turn into a lifestyle product around your home and can also scale the standalone streamer that is fantastic. And this little baby thing is brilliant for a starter system. And this bad boy, this heavy old bad boy, is if you are, like me, a proper audiophile nutcase. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. I say, this isn't a review, this is just give you a flavor of what to expect as you go up and down the levels. And if you like this video and what we're trying to do here on this channel, please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here very soon.